Gracie Jiu Jitsu rocks. Welcome to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Rocks podcast, a podcast dedicated to Gracie Jiu Jitsu and all things Gracie, including self defense, competition, anti bullying, women's self defense and empowerment nutrition, and most especially, the people involved in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. This podcast is for the average Joe. It's for anyone who practices, trains, teaches, or just loves to talk about or hear about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. We'll explore the lives of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, how they got involved in the art, and what effect it's had on their lives. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to episode 111 of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Rocks podcast. As always, I'm your host, Marty Josie, and thanks for listening. My guest today will be Professor Joel Garcia, and we'll get to that in just a moment, but let's start with our quote. And that is, that security you have from facing challenges in the academy, it gives you confidence in all other areas in your life. And that's from Roger Gracie. Okay, Professor Joel Garcia is a BJJ black belt and owner of Embrace Martial Arts in Wake Forest, North Carolina, where he teaches BJJ and Muay Thai and is an official representative of the American Killer Bees Association. He is an incredibly knowledgeable instructor. I've had the privilege of having several privates with him and have really enjoyed his deep insights into techniques and strategy and just uh, all things jujitsu. He's also a very warm, friendly, caring human being who gives us all to his students. He's a truly exceptional ambassador for jiu-jitsu, and I know you're going to enjoy this interview with him. After the interview, make sure you stick around for the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Now, without further ado, let's meet Joel. All right, I am here live and in person with BJJ Black Belt and owner and head instructor of Embrace Martial Arts, Joel Garcia. Glad to be here with you, sir. Thank you. It is awesome to have you here, too, sir. I appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to, uh, to talk to us today. So, Joel, you have a beautiful academy. Tell us a little bit about your most current <coughs> academy that you have going here. Embrace started like a, a big surprise on, my, on my, this new new chapter in my life, you know. For many years, I've been in Florida. For 10 years, I've been in Florida. And then uh, after I sold my business in Florida and then have opportunity to move to North Carolina, not to start back with jiu-jitsu, but I got invited by the one of my students to move to Cary. And I try let it go jiu-jitsu and uh, let it go like a not... I, I'm always going to be in jiu-jitsu, but try to get off the, okay, I'm not going to have academy. Let's say I'm going to have a regular job. You know, I try that, you know, and uh, I get a, I have a good opportunity to move to Cary and bring the family to North Carolina. Great place. I, I, I'm in love with North Carolina. And uh, and started working with this company as a, as a project manager, travel all over the country. And I kind of like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I will have opportunity to just enjoy BJJ. Whenever I go, I have a friends all over the country, and uh, I'm going to just jump here and there and train with friends, right? But it uh, was a lot of travel, and uh, I was missing a lot of stuff in my life, especially my family and my home. At the same time, my family on the mats. I've always been involved with in a uh in one place before and i was missing bjj i was missing big time and my wife kind of like hey i think you should let it go this is not good for us i would like to have you at home and you're not happy doing this you know it was a great salary 
and I knew I'm moving to the BJ, back to BJJ. I'm not going to have a, <laughs> n- nothing near to that money that I was making, but I knew money is not a, the main thing on my life and be happy and enjoy life and family. It was a more important. And then she's kind of like, a, I think you should open again. You should open Academy. I get a very uh, uh, a supportive friend, uh, Sean Spangler from Apex. Him and his students motivate me like a, 1,000% to open an academy, and uh, and this is how Embrace is started. Uh, I bought a house in Wake Forest. I didn't plan to open an academy, but uh, by this time, I already bought a house in Wake Forest, and my wife kind of like, just open an academy in Wake Forest. And uh, yeah, I found out a place uh, less than three minutes from my house. That's great. Your and wife sounds very encouraging, by the way. Oh, very my supportive. wife is, is she's, she's very supportive. On the beginning of my career, she didn't believe too much. She thought about this wasn't a job yeah. or something like that. It was a way to make a life or raise a family. But uh, uh, after a little while, she got used to and she knew that uh, I'm not going to leave. You know what I mean? I'm never going to leave her because of that. But at the same time, <laughs> like, you know what? This guy needs to be happy. I wanted him happy by my side. Right. And uh, she always been uh, very supportive on all these 20 years that we were married. Wow, that's awesome. And then Brace Born and then Wake Forest is, uh, and I'm happy here. So how did you come up with the, the name Embrace? What does that mean? Embrace uh, means everything for me. Embrace means embrace life. Embrace whatever you do. Embrace uh, if you're in a good, if you have a good time, embrace. If you have a bad time, embrace because it's gonna pass by. Mm, you know, and then jujitsu is like that too. You have to embrace everything that comes on your way. There's no way to avoid it. And then jujitsu are very connected with that. And uh, I felt that it was a great thing. I had my logo before. Before it was en- enjoy, embrace. Uh, this was my logo, JG, enjoy, embrace. And uh, I kind of like, uh, when I look at my logo, I kind of like uh, embrace, yeah, this is going to be the name. And this how the name came. That's but it was through my logo, you know. It was nothing like a, that I thought about it too much. It was just there. And uh, this is how it is. Well, it's, a, it's an awesome academy. And I know it's building quickly. Maybe not as quickly as like open the door day one. But it mm-hmm. seems to be getting really popular here. People really found a nice home here with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I, I believe is uh, I've been very, I'm very straightforward with everybody and um, I'm not a, uh, I'm very, I believe I'm very authentic to, uh, to, to what I do and, uh, and I think this is kind of like a make people, most of the people more comfortable, you know, uh, uh, I'm not a, a someone that force people to do things or uh, being a dictator sometimes. A lot of affiliations and instructors are kind of like dictators. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't believe in that. I believe uh, your strength come with your personality and in the way you deal with people. And if people feel comfortable with you, they will feel good, you feel comfortable in your place. You yeah. know, things like that I think is are very connected, you know, and uh, just being real with people, you know. It's very apparent that that you're real. I mean, I, we have a, a mutual friend, Jim, and uh, he met you before I did, and had had just was raving about you. So you got to meet this guy. You know, he's so he's such a cool guy, and all this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he is. I'm sure we'll meet. But I, well, the first time I met you, you just have that energy that draws you in. You just want those really exceptionally great people as far as you know you, you can tell you're, you're genuine and you have a, a good heart and things like that yeah and so yeah so it's it's immediate it's easy to connect with you like that because because you are real but so i appreciate <laughs> that about you but you also in in your academy have assigned god first uh, yeah so tell us about that this is this is before anything you know before uh before i i kind of like uh, open my eyes every day he come first he come first then my family because without him, for sure, I would not gonna be able to even be around anybody. You know, uh, I have uh, everybody have uh, their own history in their lives. And uh, on the beginning, when I was very young, I was a a great kid, but I was I, I put myself in too much trouble. And uh, but I I believe I always been uh, enraged with the life 
with the mystery of the life that I want to, I want to, I want to, why things are linked like this or why things are like that. Like everybody have that, those questions. And I have those questions at a very early age. I was, I was like a crazy about life, but at the same time I was hurting myself. And, uh, after a little while, it's kind of like, a, like everybody, like you're getting hurt once, twice, 10 times. It's like, Hey, it's time to stop. And then this one, uh, uh, Jesus came to my life. God came to my life, and then uh, was a was a big change. Everything came clear, and uh, I, as this will not happen, we're not gonna be here without Him. This is what I I believe. I don't preach that on the mats. I don't preach. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I am a Christian, but I don't preach on the mats. But I believe our attitude make a difference, mm-hmm. and people will look. And then what, what did this guy have something different? I don't have nothing different. I just found a light, you know what I mean? And then uh, I try just put it right there and, uh, uh, and people, I think they, they can recognize some things and I uh, kind of like, okay, this is what it is, you know, but God first nice. forever, for sure. <laughs> Dude, it's a great philosophy to have. Let's, let's uh, change gears and, and back up a little bit and, and talk about how you got started in, in martial arts and jiu-jitsu and kind of what that journey has been like for you. Yeah, uh, martial arts, I'm not going to talk specifically just jiu-jitsu, but sure. uh, martial arts is uh, something that came on my life. I think I was four years and a half, something like that. I was like a, that kid that <laughs> make a lot of noise and always hyper and very, i always been a, a athletic when I was a kid, always good in the sports, and I'm not that, not that so good on, on the school, and my dad kind of like, a, I think I need to put this kid on the martial arts, I think all parents thinking about that, right, and uh, we found a, a judo academy, and uh, I was, I'm, I'm so thrilled and happy to talk about this guy, his name is, uh, uh, his nickname is Brea, and uh, He's a belonged to a, a, a long lineage of uh, judo in Brazil. Brazil and judo in Brazil is huge. People don't know that. Most people don't know, but judo in Brazil is huge, like a huge. It was like a you can find judo in public schools. Like wow, a, this cool. is this is a dream. Like a oh, people, why we have a jiu-jitsu in Abu Dhabi in the public schools in Brazil we have a judo in public schools. Now jiu-jitsu start going to some places, you know, people created some stuff. But uh, my my dad put me on a judo, and I start training as hard as I could, fall in love, getting beat every day in a judo. And, like, a, the the challenge for me always was what was attract me on the martial arts because I don't want to be just another one that do something. I want to be something different in anything that I did in my life. I want to make a difference. And uh, I got to beat so much in judo. And then my instructor saw that that motivation that I have and that fire that I have. And then he pushed me, always pushed me. And in a very short period of time, I was training not just in one academy, but in two academies. And I started training two times a day wow. in a very early age and then go against always big people. And this is kind of like, okay, it was a challenge every day. And then this is what I, I was enjoying. And uh, after a long time training too, I have 16 years old. And then after far away in the road, uh, when I was like a little older, Muay Thai came in my way. I kind of like, a, oh, I don't want to grapple anybody. You going to start punching people now. <laughs> and uh, Muay Thai came in my way through uh, 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 Master Andre Gomez in Campinas, near to São Paulo. It's a big city. And uh, he taught me so much. Uh, very thankful. And to be connected with him, you know, uh, uh Later on the road, I get connected with Professor uh, Israel Gomez too, a little bit through shoot box, doing the trips in, in Curitiba. And, but I just met, it wasn't something that I was connected to them, but I met some people in Curitiba that I, where I born, killer bees born in Curitiba too, uh, when a shoot box like I broke up a little bit and 
Anderson Silva, uh, Rodrigo Vidal, and Israel Gomes left shoot box and started Killer Bees. But uh, and I started teaching Muay Thai later on, on my hometown in, in, in Brazil. And through the 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 Muay Thai, I kind of like, man, I want to open an academy, and I want to have everything in my academy. I'm not like the guy like I was a straight ahead. No, we just do this here. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I, I need to both be open mind, and uh, I have a Jiu Jitsu in my academy, I have Muay Thai, boxing, and I kind of like, okay, if I am just doing Muay Thai, I have to learn some Jiu Jitsu too because I have to understand better these things. And then the Jiu Jitsu guys start like a hey, can I train Muay Thai too? Some of them want to want to fight MMA and stuff like that. And I start like, okay, you're welcome. And they get a beat on the Muay Thai class and kind of like, oh, now it's your turn. You have to come to our class. <laughs> and, That's great. and then I start get my, my, myself in a big challenge too. And at the same time, I have that judo uh, background on me, very strong. And they, man, you have a good base. You have you ever done this before? I say, no, I'm just reacting. What are you guys <laughs> doing with me? And I get caught in the stupid guillotine. It's like, a, like everybody does in the beginning uh -huh. and all those things. And uh, I kind of like, man, this is cool. I saw, I remember a little guy choking me like, a, like a nothing. <laughs> and I kind of like, man. And that was uh, like a, when the bug bite me. And I kind of like, a, this is effective, this is cool. And uh, later on, this instructor uh, left my academy and to Spain, and I got another guy from uh, Belém do Pará, uh, hire him for my academy and start training Jiu-Jitsu. He has a, his background was, a, uh, his association was under Hoyler Gracie, and uh, start like from the beginning, get in love with a butterfly sweeps because Hoyler, Hoyler was very, onto this and they're you know and i kind of like a fall in love and start training and never stop it nice. and muay thai became like a little bit in second place in my life and bjj took over nice <laughs> so where did you go from there and what brought you to eventually make the move to the states uh it was in uh in 2006 to 2007 near this time, a big events happened in my life. I find that I found out that I have a, a little cancer, and uh, I by this time my academy was so successful. I have a kind of like a 450 students in academy, have a eight instructors in academy, uh, have a dream. Yeah, like the dream, like a, oh it's my like gosh, look at this, yeah. and then it was. In the beginning, I have a very a small place, and I got a hundred students in a very small place, it's smaller than the place that I have now. And I kind of like, man, this thing is, is cool, and motivate me. And then my wife started taking more serious because, oh, now he's bringing money back home. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, you know, and I find out that I have a, a little uh, healthy issue that I have to take in care, and. Uh, I took care, but when I get back to the academy, they something happens. They decide to open their own academy. They saw that I have a bunch of students. They thought, oh, this is our student. This is not their, this is not the academy students. And they end up taking a different direction. And by that time, I was looking like back in the days. We still have this web page in Brazil. They call it Tatami. It's like a big uh, uh, web page, like a, like a, everything that happens in MMA or Jiu Jitsu or any martial art sport in Brazil is right there on this page. And I always follow and I see everybody moving to us, everybody moving to us. I'm kind of like, man, what's going on? You know, and by the time I have a one fighter, uh, Gerson Cordero, he, he tried to get a fight for him in, in Massachusetts, uh, kind of like a, it was about to happen. Uh, and and I thought about, you know what, I gotta make a contact with people in the uh, US and uh, maybe go there 30 days before the fight. Let me, let me stop you, because I don't wanna leave out this piece. Uh -huh. Before you made the move, your nickname, the Joker, that came about during that time. Yes, yeah, right? during that, that, that The do, people uh, left your academy. Exactly, so tell exactly. us a little about that before we move on. Uh, some of uh, my instructors, some uh, one off person that was to work with me, uh, he kinda like, uh, 
uh, uh, he want to screw me up big time, you know. And then he was the leader of a made up the other instructor's mind to leave me and open the other place. And as they doing that, this guy, we have a, a nice picture in a, on, a, on Academy that uh, we have, uh, I was in the center and I have all the instructors by my side. And uh, and uh, he took a picture uh, of a, a funny cloud and a cloud and uh, put on a cover of my face and post it on a, on the internet. By that time, it was MySpace. It was a long time ago. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and the internet barely worked by right, that time, especially in Brazil. Yeah. But anyway, he did that, and uh, he called me as a joker, not as a cloud. You know what I mean? He yeah. tried put me down, whatever, and uh, so he was just making fun of you. Basically. Yeah, he yeah. tried making fun of me, and I took it like just as he said, but in a different direction. Uh, by the time I was, uh, I was doing boxing, I was doing, uh, I was teaching Muay Thai, training MMA fighters, uh, being a successful person, doing BJJ, doing everything. And I say, yeah, I am a joker. I do everything. I can fit my, my card as the joker card. I can fit in any game. Yeah. Yes. I think this is match with me for sure. Nice. And I, I translate that on this way uh -huh. and I make them even more piss. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like, okay, you think you're going to take me over? Yeah. No. All right. And then when I came to US, people recognized that on me right away because I was teaching MMA classes. I was doing Muay Thai, teaching Muay Thai and doing BJJ classes. And man, definitely you're fitting all the games. And then the Joker continued, you know, like a, not that I'm a joke, but I'm a jo the joker, yeah. and then stick on me, and and, and uh, by that time too, my English was so poor, and I was first thing that you learn in a in a foreign language, you learn bad words, right? <laughs> right? And I was joking a lot, and I was loud on the mats, and I was talk too much crap, yeah. and uh, and then I was joking a lot, you know, and then everything came like it just. One thing came to the other. So you really embraced yeah, it. Yeah, I embraced the name. And, and <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, uh, with it. it's, it's taken a good way. And then that people that try to stab my back and back in Brazil, they just cry about it because uh, I still good. <laughs> that's great. That's great. But I love it when it works out like that. So then when you landed here when in the I landed, States. Uh, when I landed here in the States, uh, first I have that opportunity to bring someone to fight here and end up the fight not happening. But I make a contact with two persons by that time. One was Ricardo Cavalcanti and then Carson Gracie, famous person, have a huge academy in Las Vegas. And then the other person was Renato Tavares and uh, connected to American Top Team in Florida. And one thing that was very common, my academy in Brazil was Elite Fight. And the academy that he opened up in Orlando by the time was Elite Fight also. And end up that Renato send me a message back. Ricardo never sent me a message back. Renato sent me a message back. Kind of like, hey, you're welcome to come. And the fight never happens. I came to US. You stick with Renato for a little while. I kind of like, uh, and he really liked what I show and then end up that uh, I got invited through him to being part of the American Top Team. And uh, they became my, like a, my, my sponsor in the beginning to bring me over here, doing all that paperwork. And here I am. After many years, I'm glad to meet up through, through Renato. Being involved into American Top Team was a huge thing. You know, it was very hard in the beginning. I, I wasn't speaking English at all, but at the same time, it was a lot of Brazilians, a lot of all oh, this, this, vibe going on mm -hmm. in Florida, but my mentality was kind of like a different, that uh, I, and my idea, if I move to another country, if I move to, I choose to move to US, I didn't, I, I choose to come here because I saw an opportunity for myself and for my family, live a different life. We had a very good life in Brazil, but at the same time, I want to give a different perspective for my family. I want to live in a place that have more respect and this was my big issue in Brazil. Like uh, people in Brazil like to make on their own rules and then everybody do whatever they want. 
And I, I don't like that. I like that what is right is right, what is wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. And moving to West was a big thing for me because I trust on that on that strong feeling that, uh, let's say, the roots that Americans born, that uh, the word is still valuable. I know people are bad people everywhere, sure. you know, but uh, I believe people are still a lot more respectable here and uh, and uh, it was a great thing to move and uh, come to us and enjoy the country, being involved with so many good people, meet up like uh, Ricardo Libori, work with them, so many other instructors from American Top Team, big names uh, that was in the UFC and all this. My mm -hmm. dream in the beginning was like, I want to be an MMA coach. And I remember by that time, Renato said, man, you're going to change your mind. And then I did, you know, it's kind of like I did a work with a few MMA fighters, became friend of me, few of them. Some of them, I kind of like, I don't want to get near to you, you know, and uh, and uh, I, I embraced everything, learned, struggle, improved my English a lot. It was something that was very important for me because a lot of Brazilians come here, a lot of people from other countries come to us, move to the country, and don't speak English at all. They don't speak English. I kind of like a man. You have to, you know, yeah. be connected to the to the country. And then language was something very important for me. I still try by myself, learn every day. Oh, you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is how American Top Team came, and it was strong. And then after, end up that uh, we move it out, the American Top Team, start Legacy Martial Arts in Florida working with Renato by the time. Always worked with me and Renato, we became partners. We have a three academies in Florida. Uh, Renato was someone that uh, I, I'm black belt. I, I got my black belt under Renato Tavares. Carson, Carson Grace black belt, well known all over the world. And uh, this is how I, Jiu Jitsu gets so big on me and gets strong on me and the values of the Carson Grace you know, mentality and uh, the way to to teach, to to show jiu-jitsu, show to everyone, not like a, you know what I mean, put on a, a, a tags on people, oh, these people mm -hmm. can do, these people, no, jiu-jitsu is for, I believe it's for everyone that want to do jiu-jitsu. Right. Because those that does not want to taste it, but don't want to embrace it, Jiu-Jitsu, we will spell them, right? You know what I mean? It's kind of <laughs> yeah. like you have to embrace it. If you don't embrace it, right. you're naturally going to be spelled by it. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, I see this a lot, you know. And after uh, uh, after American Top Team, how I came to, now I'm American Clear Peace, you know. Israel Gomez was uh, a friend that uh, that embraced me on a, hard, on a hard moment of my life mm -hmm. when a, when I, I sold my academies, me and Renato broke, we broke our relationship after 10 years. And, uh, but we, we, we used to, I respect Renato so much, but uh, Israel came up. Uh, I, I was already helping Israel with American Clear Bees here in the US, uh, doing like uh, the curriculums for American Clear Bees, doing things for American Clear Bees on the Muay Thai side. And then Israel is kind of like a man. You, 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 you you're mine now. You're not. You're not going <laughs> anywhere. And then he's kind of like a no. You, you now you're full American Clear Bees. You're gonna work with me on Jiu Jitsu. Let's help me on, on grow the association. You know, and uh, Israel like a has been great, an amazing person for me and for my family. You know. May 18th, he'll be here with us doing a seminar. One year anniversary of Embrace. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. So let's talk a little bit more about your, the philosophy of your, your academy. How do you manage different types of, of students? You know, everything from the, those are there just coming for, you, you know, you said jujitsu is for everyone who wants to do jujitsu. So people that are coming just kind of for fun or general development versus more kind of hardcore, serious-minded students. How do you approach both of those and, and kind of include everybody? Uh, yes, I, I believe like a, a student has to be smart when they train. You know, I saw people being a, a world champion training with, not with black belts every day, but they being as smart the way they training. Let's say I'm going to train with a, a, a white belt that just started a strong guy. What I'm going to do? I'm just going to pass his guard and then just smash and choke him? 
So you know what? I have to use this guy to my benefit. You know, he's strong and he's big. Let him be in the bottom. Let him use his strength and try bullying me here. And I'm going to work my guard. I'm going to sweep him and go back. And uh, this is just a different point of view to, 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 for your benefit on a training. And at the same time, the other person start learning, oh, I should not step here, and I should step there. This guy, even I'm strong and doing this, I can't, I can't pass his guard, and he's still sweeping me, you know? And uh, uh, is that mentality that uh, uses strength on the beginning in Jiu-Jitsu isn't everybody, because it's the only thing that you have sure. is strength. You're related, okay, I'm gonna try hold this person, or I cry, if, you don't, if you don't have a technique, you try made up by the strength. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, this what happened, uh, and uh, everybody have a strength. Some people have a lot. Some people have a few. Some people does have a strength, but does not know how to use. Some people have a strength, but doesn't know how to position their body. Mm -hmm. Some people does not have a strength at all, but they are very smart. And uh, you have to to like a break all this and make people understand that they do have one of those qualities and they have one of the the weakness and then when they realize the strength their strength and their weakness they start improving jiu-jitsu mm. because uh, uh if you want to improve you have to work on your weakness not a, just on your strength because jiu-jitsu gonna put you in a position right. that you're weak yeah, all the time that's true and if you don't work your weakness, you you your strength not gonna save you. You know you okay. have you have to work your weakness, and then uh, and this is what I try to work with the students. You know, uh, 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 sometimes I have like a, a a little guys, a little a young kids that come here. I have a, a, a two st one student in particular that I, I always I look a student as a project for me because. They have one. They always offer one challenge for me, and I want to kind of like I I I want to accept. I want to take the challenge and and prove to myself and to him. I don't tell him, but I later on the road I say, hey, remember when you started? <laughs> I just want to say that, and then he have the picture when he started, right? Because he was a struggle in something. Now he does not struggle anymore. You know, I have a student that is a. Uh, I'm his fan number one, and I, I look at him yesterday before he leave the match, I stop him and, and I hug him and say, man, you don't know how much you motivate me to be here. He's over 50 years old, he has a heart surgery, he has a stand on his heart, wow. he has all this. I remember when he walked in the academy, he was barely running around the match or doing jumping jacks. He has a very hard time to understand, like understand how to breathe and move at the same time. And uh, he is a black belt, hardcore karate guy from back in the days. Mm -hmm. And he say, no, I want to try something different. And it was a challenge for me. Getting someone that is a black belt in karate, hardcore karate mentality, <laughs> and then step in on the jiu-jitsu and have a heart surgery and all this, over 50 and looking in all the shape. And now he's a savage. Yeah. And now he's a savage after... After I think he trained now for about like a six months and a half. In the beginning, he would show up in the max two times a week. Now he show up four or five times wow, a week. That's awesome. And he's a savage. He go against everybody, and he try his best. Now he roll uh, five rolls of five minutes before he was unable to finish a first roll. And now he finished, and then he said, Joel, today I'm going back home riding like a boss because I know I did well. <laughs> and then sometimes they go back, I'm pissed today. I'm kind of like, everybody killed me. I don't know what to do here. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what to do there. And I look this, I kind of like, a, man, I'm making different in this big yes, person's life. Absolutely. And then this is what I kind of like, a, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I have some students that are very challenged too that uh, first, they don't believe in themselves. And they are stuck on that for very long, mm. like a, uh, for many reasons, like a personal reasons, people get stuck on their self and then jujitsu show them their weakness and, and jujitsu became a problem. Oh, I don't want to do jujitsu anymore because jujitsu is too hard. No, 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 jujitsu is just showing how weak you are. 
and then you have to embrace and accept it and work your weakness, mm-hmm. or you're going to be expelled by these youths. You're right. You, you know? got to be able to, because <laughs> the ego is a crazy thing. And exactly. You, and, and it will, you will have the line shine or shown on you, right? On your weaknesses, on your imperfections, or whatever it may be, your shortcomings. And uh, if you're not the kind of person that can say, okay, uh, I, there it is, it's all right, and I can work through it and overcome it and get better. If you're just married to the ego, you're going to be out the door because you don't want to look bad, right? Yeah, my gosh. Uh, uh, I try to explain for them that no one will master jiu-jitsu because there's always someone who will come some with something mm-hmm. new. That's jiu-jitsu right. evolves so many things. And uh, I always tell them, like, hey, you will see someone coming here and drag my butt all over the mats, and I'm going to be miserable, you know? And let me tell you, We'll be okay because I'm. I will be learning something, you know. And uh, uh, and they say like, oh, I did. I, I didn't see this yet. I don't see. I don't <laughs> see people coming here and drag you all over the mats, you know. Uh, but I say, listen, will happen. Will happen. I'm and I'm very comfortable on my skin to accept that. Mm, right? I love that. And uh, uh, but jujitsu is kind of like a the traditional martial arts. People kind of like a set up steps and positions. And for your prize, you have a belt, right? Some academies teach like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do not teach like that. I kind of like, a, I believe like a, we are unique, special individuals in this world. There's nobody is equal. Any. Right. I cannot make one person that is like a 220 pounds, short, stucky, have a short legs, play a, a, a spider guard well. I cannot make him do a very nice deep half guard. I can't. Right. And this means that he was not going to be black belt one day? I don't know. For sure he can be. It's about him figuring out the best mm-hmm. way to play some parts of the game. Right. But, yeah, maybe he's going to be able to teach that position or to pass that position to someone, but he's not going to be able to add on his game. Mm-hmm. He will know what it is, but he's not going to be able to add on his toolbox, you know what I mean, to, yeah. to apply on his jiu-jitsu when he go train or compete. Right. And uh, Not everything's going to fit as no, part of your it's game, kinda right? No, like it's, it's like a, it's some people have qualities and some people yeah. don't, you know what I mean? And then what do you have to put? Put a light on the qualities, the things that you don't have too much, create a little a protective, you know what I mean, positions to not get in there uh-huh. and then keep moving what, what do you do, you know? But does not mean like a... You're not gonna. Oh, you're never gonna be. You're never gonna be a blue belt if you don't do this. I don't believe in that. I believe a lot more in attitude, on a mat. I believe a lot more in uh, uh, the way people behave on the mats as they rolling. They understanding positions, understand where to go, where not to go. For sure, some basic stuff they always everybody have to know, right? But. Uh, I understand people limitations mm-hmm. and qualities too, and then you see the whole picture. Exactly, I see the, always the whole picture. I cannot create a system and then put on like a ten positions on a wall and say, "Hey, if you want to get a, this is stripe, you have to show me those ten positions." Okay, I can teach a monkey to <laughs> repeat those positions. I see a right. lot of that like a people do in an academy. It's like a, "Hey, you have to do this thing here to get promoted to this." Okay, he never done that before. He just look at a video on the internet or get a, some student that does this in Memorize academy. The hey, just okay, okay, because I have to show this in a test. Right, right. And then they show that position in a test, but he never used it in jiu jitsu. Means he don't know the position. Right. He can, he can uh, 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 create a replica from that movement. Mm-hmm. He can do something, but. He don't know how to apply and use the application applications, other thing. thing. And what right. I'm looking for is for application. Mm. You know, it's not like a, oh, I know how to do that. Okay, you know how to do this on a live situation, right? To to put yourself on that situation, and then this is the key for have a good, solid jiu-jitsu. You can like a, you hear from the best jiu-jitsu guys in the world, like a. Roger Gracie, you you interviewed him like a little while ago. I'm his fan. He used the same sweep all the time. He used the same choke all the time. He have five, six moves that he does his whole career. Very simple jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Doesn't mean he don't know the other things. Right. He knows all right. the other things. But he used 
those abilities to do his jiu-jitsu and he able to to be like a many times world champion right. and Roger Gracie, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a, I look people like that and say, man, it's amazing, you know? It's kind of like a solid jiu-jitsu, simple. Like I, I always say to my students, rice and beans. <laughs> Just rice and beans. You're solid, you know yeah. I mean? You don't need too many fancy stuff. I believe a lot in a, like a, it's old school jiu-jitsu, solid stuff. Yeah. I do love new stuff too, but solid it make you the strength, make right. your, your base is strong. So know? make that your foundation and maybe yep. some of the more kind of flashy stuff. It's fun to, to do. It's fun. So to it's fun do. to play with, but don't rely on that really, right? As your as your real base no, or no. your real bread and butter or, or rice and beans. So rice and beans and bread and butter. <laughs> like it works for you. In the morning is good, right? Yeah, absolutely. And coffee, don't forget the coffee. You gotta have the coffee. <laughs> so uh, elaborate a little more on, on what's the expectation of your students uh, on and off the mat as far as behavior, as well as how do you feel instructors themselves should carry themselves on and off the mat? Uh, uh, it's a big thing, you know. Uh, you have to walk as you talk, right? This is what this Americans say, right? All right. Yeah, and uh, I believe a lot of like that, you know. If you uh, <clears throat> you try to be an example on a mat, but out of the mats, you you have a, a not very good attitude, you know what I mean? I, 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 this is a big fault, you know? Uh, I believe that uh, uh, jiu-jitsu happens in and off the mats, you know? Uh, after a while, jiu-jitsu translated, we talk about jiu-jitsu lifestyles and all this. I believe like, jiu-jitsu show us situations and everywhere, how to deal with situations and behave and act and move and do things. And uh, behave is something that is, is huge for me, it's kind of like a, I do not accept people, or even my, like a, what I do for myself. I'm right there in the front doing what I have to do. I have to be ex do an example. I started with the way I carry on my gi, the way I walk in the mats, the way I leave the mats. When I leave the mats, that is just a continuation. It's like it never stops, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have to respect my kids, my wife. I have to respect people around me the way I want to be respected. Everything started the way I do and mm -hmm. the way I want things for me. Okay, if I want to be treated well, I have to treat people well. Mm -hmm. I can't. I, it cannot be any different. I can't be a, a, a freaking, uh, you know what I mean, a, a guy that uh, treat people like a bad and I want to respect. Come right, on, how right. are you going to get respect if you treat people bad, you know? But uh, I believe, like, uh, you got respect by the way you behave and you, you know what I mean, in mm -hmm. and off mats. And uh, off the mats is very important for me. I have like a, uh, I believe like a lot of instructors became like a, uh, uh, a little bit of a psychology too. Like he kind of like all his students come with problems off the mats and, and, and end up sharing with us. And uh, I believe that, uh, yeah, I can say like, this is not my deal. I don't care about it. But uh, we grow strong if we share and if we be fa faithful and truthful for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then if a student come and share something personal with me, first, I appreciate very much because he's trust, he has a sort of trust on yeah. my person. Yes. Not just inside the mats, but outside the mats because he see how I behave. Right. And I kind of like a man, this guy trusts on me. I have to respect him. I cannot treat him like a whatever, you know. I have <laughs> to listen. I think it's a part of the instructor, listen to their students in and off the mats because end up reflecting in both spaces, you know what I mean, inside mm -hmm. and, off, and off the mats, you know. And uh, 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 I, I want to have a students like, a, in my academy, I don't see a bad person walking in the mats yet. You know what? Yeah. Because they don't find partners here. They don't find people to run their mouth bad about the other people because I don't accept that here, you know? And then if someone come here with those intentions, they come around and start trying to make a friends, you're not gonna find another one like him, you know? And, uh, and uh, this is kind of like a, something that uh, always uh, uh, help us, you know, in and off the mats. You know, you said being the same 
being the same on and off the mat, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, if you if there's a big difference mm -hmm. between who you are and how you act on and off, then obviously you're being fake on one or the other, right? Uh, yes. So there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference because you're a genuine person. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're having to change a lot about how you are when you leave the academy or put on a different personality to mm -hmm. be in the in the class, it's that it shows that you're 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 faking one or the other. So it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. So do you have any hobbies off the mat? Do you have time for anything else? Uh, I know you visit the family <laughs> yes. and also with running yes. the academy. Uh, my hobby. My hobby I think is my family. All right. I don't have too much time for ad I think uh, I uh, I don't take my job. I never took my job, not my profession, as a hobby. A lot of martial artists open schools, but they have a, a their other jobs. Mm -hmm. This is not a never been a hobby for me. Right. Always been a work, and always took serious. At the same time, I enjoy every day that I'm walking the mats. Also. We do have a problems in the mats that we have to learn how to deal, and it is fine. But the the hobby off the mats, I can tell you, that is my my kids, my girls, you know, Julia and Lara, and for sure my wife. She always gonna be 16 years old. <laughs> my daughter now, my oldest one is 14, and wow. my youngest is 10. It's kind of like I I believe 100% is my hobby is my family. You know, we're we're. As a family, we're very we are very good friends from each other. We just have each other. We don't have I don't have other family in U.S. I don't have a parents or nothing, and then we are very strong bonded. And, it and probably made you stronger, right? Uh, exactly, because, because we support each yeah, other. Yeah. You know what I mean? In any situation, I believe my my hobby is that when I have a time, I do play with them. This is a problem because I should play a little bit more with my hobby. I should do my hobby a lot more. <laughs> But Jiu Jitsu is still, the academy is still taking too much time. The right. work is still taking too much time. Well, there's nothing like family. And that really, you know what's important in life and what you, you know, you know what plants that need watering. You know what I mean? It's where your time and attention needs to go. It sounds like you, you try to stay pretty you know, balanced and not be too much in one or the other, but to keep everything in focus. So that's it's true. Cool. That's it's cool. true. A lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of people don't do that well enough. They get out of balance and, and, and nobody's perfect, but. But the priorities have to be the, the important things for sure. It's true. So you've had a really interesting life and accomplished quite a bit for sure. What are you the most proud of so far? I'm proud to be a good father. I believe so. A good husband. You know, I'm married for 20 years. People still look at me, what? You're married for 20 years? Say, yes, I am. Proudly married for 20 What's years. What's the secret of, of having a... a, a, a Fulfilling, satisfying, and long-lasting marriage. Embrace all the situations because we will run through troubles and you will have a good times and you have to enjoy all of them and learn how to go through just like we do in the mats. There's no, there's no different. Right. If, you, if you're selfish, you're going to have problems. You know, you have to be a little bit more giving than taking and, uh, and, and enjoy every day right on <laughs> but um, I believe like uh, accomplishments in uh, martial arts I never been a world champion I never have a dream to trip to be a I want to be a world champion and, and do everything for that um, my always my goal being uh, to be a good person in whatever I was doing I don't want to be the regular I want to make a difference at some point and I believe uh, Every each one that passed by on my mats, and, and I had, they gave me the opportunity to have them with me for a while because I know students come and go. I've never been a dictator that, oh, you belong to me, you cannot train in other <laughs> place. No, 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 no. I know that students come and go, and I have a big pleasure to create a scar, a positive scar on their life. Mm, I like the way you put that. You know what I mean? A positive yeah. scar. Yeah. You know that he will remind my my goal. My I I didn't accomplish this goal yet, but my biggest goal is that one day, someone knocking my door. And I will not gonna recognize his face, and he will say, "You make a big difference in my life. I work. I train with you when I was ten years old. I was fifteen years old. Right. And I have like a." Right now, we just have a someone that walk here in the mm -hmm. mats. We took uh, a little break. Abe Stasio. 
Abe was one of the first students that I have, a good Muay Thai student that I have back in Florida. And uh, today he's married. He's already have one kid. The second kid is in a row. His wife was also my student. She trained with me. She fought um, amateur MMA. Abe was a good fighter. She f he fought some uh, amateurs. He had into pros. He did a pro Muay Thai, pro MMA. He did it very well. Now he's a brown belt. He know me for very long. And then he just came for a visit for after I don't see him for about like a two years. He came just to see me travel. And, and I look at my self on his life i know that i create a positive scar yeah. you know what i mean and then i know i'm in the history of his life he he the, him and his wife get together because one day he called like hey Joel, what do you think about her <laughs> i think man i think she's a good and then she's the same oh, and then uh, you know i have so many things like that and yeah. this make me more happy than anything yeah. that to have that that connection yeah. make a difference in people's life. This is, is no better trophy yeah. because a medal is a piece of a medal that comes and in one day nobody will remember that. But who you are mm -hmm. as a person and what do you do to make a difference in people's life yeah. will stick forever. That's true. You know, it will stick forever. That's, that's deep. That's deep impact there. You know, that's this is this is this is what I'm looking forward. You know. Yes. Do I like to create champions? For sure, I do. For sure, I do. I help few. Uh, I believe I help a few people to get at some point on their career. Mm -hmm. You know, just sharing a little bit about like what's going on now. Uh, when I moved to North Carolina. Uh, some people probably dig it on me a little bit on a social media or connection with other people. And some people find out that I was a very good instructor, uh, MMA instructor, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, end up now that I have like a two UFC fighters training with me, mm -hmm. Hannah Cyphers and uh, uh, Alan Crowder, you know, uh, uh, and uh, I, I left MMA a while ago, but they brought me the, the fire to work with them, especially because they are very raw and they have so much room to grow. Yeah. And uh, they are very humble, come from good families, and they're willing to listen and do what you said and get, they're coachables. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to train someone that, uh, um, this person, whatever right. i'm sorry i right. don't have a time for you you, for you, know, you know what i mean right. you know what i mean but as yeah. someone i this is a, this is a cool thing i'm living a good moment now that a academy going up mm -hmm. i'm doing the academy by myself uh and uh, uh have all these aspects have a good kids class parents and, and people and also working with professional athletes again mm -hmm. you know that uh that uh, I'm very thankful, you know. And this happened because I have a heritage, I have a history, and right. I have a past, a positive past that affected people in my past, that mm -hmm. people still look at these days, hey, I want a piece of that too. And then I think this is, I always look myself as a tool. I never look, I never want to put a light on me. My, the light is on the people that are coming right. to walk here. The light is on them. Yeah, My job is to make them shine that's great. on whatever they want to shine. You know, that's great. I look myself as a tool. I don't look myself as a, as a, oh, the light has to be on me and you come here because of it. No, 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 no. I'm part of the big, uh, the, the big, Thing will happen on you, mm -hmm. and I'm just part of this. I'm just helping you to put a light on yourself. You know what I mean? I'm, You're just facilitating that that growth exactly, and transformation, exactly, right? Exactly. And, exactly. and I like I like you said that at this point, <clears throat> your your main focus isn't professional fighters. You like the you know the kind of the general student, but you also still get to do that, and especially someone who's kind of early on, like Hannah. I got to be here during one session recently when you were coaching her before her next fight. And uh -huh. she does seem like just a really humble, nice person. Oh, yeah. And to yeah. be able to work with her that like kind of earlier in her development is probably pretty gratifying, I would think. Yes. Uh, uh, Hannah worked with a few other coaches, and, uh, and uh, she's a very humble girl. I love to work with her just because 
uh, she is the type of person that I say, Hannah, you have to show up at five in the morning. When you get in the mats, I'm not gonna be there, but you have to do 500 push-ups, okay? And then when I get there, I want my mats clean. If I say that for her, she will do it. And she don't ask for why, mm -hmm. you know? And she will be grateful to be doing that right. because she understands that whatever I ask for her to do is for her good, right. is for her benefit. It's That's not great. because I want you know, it's because what I want is what she needs. And then she understand that and then she embrace that, you know, like, a, and I look at her like, man, is she, is she gonna be so good in three years? I, and I, one time I told her to, her to her manager, I say, listen, Hannah will be a good fighter, a great fighter. She will have a bright future. I don't know until when I'm going to work with her. And then he's kind of like, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? You're not going to say, no, no, no. I don't know. The future does not belong to me. Mm -hmm. We have a different paths path in our life all the time. And it can change. It's true. But I learned that the, the future don't belong to me. It belongs to God. And it's true. I had to let him do what he does best. And I had to put myself as a tool to be available. And on a, maybe in the future, she don't need that tool anymore. And maybe she need another tool. And right. you know what? I'm You're cool, okay. I'm, yeah. a, I'm cool with that. That's great. I That's cannot great be, a, you know what I mean? I, I'm cool with that. That's awesome. So as we wrap up, is there anybody uh, that you haven't already spoke of or acknowledged that's had a big impact on your life? And anybody that you'd like to shout out to or, any, or just acknowledge? In martial way? arts? Yeah. On or off the mat, doesn't matter. On and off the mats, for sure. Off the mats, my mom and my dad, I miss them. <laughs> and uh, they are, they are, they was so hard on me. They, they make me be a man and be a, a man of word, you know what I mean? Whatever you said, you had to do it. Don't, don't let it, don't do nothing different. And I learned this at a very early age. And I'm so thankful that I, I get my butt whooped at like a every day of the week, you know, and I'm very, very happy to have the parenting that I had it. Uh, for sure, a lot of things that happen inside the mats is because they, they, they give me a lot, you know what I mean? They, they show me a lot. And uh, in martial arts, I have so many people that, I, that, I, that I, I, I appreciate to know, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a, uh, uh, for sure, being being connected uh, on these days, like I have a friend, like I said, uh, Professor Israel Gomez is is, a, is someone that I have a big heart, and he he said sometimes like, you doing this better than me, you know what I mean? He's he's an older black belt than me, but uh, he's saying that because he's humble too, and he appreciate when someone does something, and he don't he don't put a like a, 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 a canvas over the person, he actually put on a light on the other person, and I see this a very positive thing, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of instructors, they, they kind of like, a, oh, he sees someone doing something well, they kind of like say, ah, oh, he's doing okay. They don't like to say, <laughs> man, this guy doing so good. Right. I, I want to learn that too, you know what I mean? And then Israel was very humble, and he always say that, you know, uh, and make me happy to be with him, you know. But, you know, in martial arts, I, I, I have so many people that came past by my life that make so much a difference. At this moment, for sure, Israel, and uh, that is with me. I, right here near to me, I have a, a Sean Spangler that uh, is a, a older guy, a black belt, tough dude that uh, I appreciate so much. He motivate me to be on the mats teaching again. He's a student, motivate me. He kind of like a drill. Let me tell you, is a, you're doing an unservice for the jiu-jitsu, not teaching. Wow. This is what he said. He said like, a, is a, you have to teach. I remember the first time that I walked into his academy, usually black belts, uh, when you go to an academy that you don't know the other guy, he want to put you a little bit on the side to uh -huh. not let you shine. Right, right. He stay like a focus on me, right? 
the first day that I walk in with on the Sean Spangler Academy, I knew that we're gonna be a good friends, just because of his attitude. He said, "Hey, today we have a a guest instructor." Professor Joel gonna teach a class. I call like, hey, what's going on, man? I came here for a training with you. It's the first time that I'm walking here. Right. Say, oh, I just wanna see what you do, man. I, got, I wanna see what the way you teach. I wanna see that. He was intrigued about it, like, a, what do you do? I wanna see it. He was, because he's, he's a passionate, very, open. very open mind and passionate from what he's doing. And this is how instructors supposed to be. Yeah. Not instead put a canvas in other people. Mm -hmm but put on a light what they doing well. That's awesome. I don't believe that I'm amazing jiu-jitsu guy. No, I'm, I'm, I know some, you know what I mean? And I love to share what I know, that's it. And uh, Sean showed me that uh, after we finished the class, he, my, my position that I'm, I'm very weak, that I have to improve a lot is my guard game. And it's where I, most of the time when you see me training, I am at the bottom because it's where I want to improve as most, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, I was, hey, Joel, can you show something from the, and then I, uh, from the bottom, like a, a sweep or something, and then I show him a position. He kind of like, a, man, this fits so good on my game. I never done this. And then he started doing it, and they get motivated. And then because of his attitude and his motivation to learn something new, his students saw something very positive on him through mm -hmm. his attitude. That's beautiful, man. And instead, they put a light on Sean because he's humble and brings someone to right. do that. They give him more value for his instructor. Not they, they didn't unvalue his instructor and put a value on me. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? They yeah. appreciate their instructor mm -hmm. they have because they, they know their instructor won the best for them. Yeah. And he's you know? human and he's real and he's open and wants to continue exactly. to learn where he can too. Exactly. I mean, and then this is about some, someone that I recently make. A, he don't know that. Uh, maybe he knows, but uh, he make a very good uh, impact on my, on my, on this chapter of my life. Nice. You know what I mean? That uh, 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 he make. I was very hurt when I left Florida. It was a, a ten years relationship with me and, and Renato. And I appreciate everything that he taught. I learned with him. Right. You know, my roots is Carson Gracie because of him. Today, Israel Gomez is a Carson Gracie also. He's uh, under Carlinhos Lima. That it was Carson Gracie, Black Bell too. And Carlinhos and Renato, they're back t together in Curitiba, back, back, back in Brazil, like in the early 90s, you know what I mean? Everybody's connected in some Right, way you know right. and i felt that uh, i still in the same path and uh but sean like uh, he he did have a very good impact just because of his attitude and show me because i was hurt and he showed me say man you're a great instructor you're a good instructor you have to show what you know to people you have That's to great. you had to 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 share this with people it's not fair yeah, you, you should share it yeah he's kind of like a his students like a come from apex and come here to train every every time he's got his students come sean come here john shell from other association come here mm -hmm. from uh carioca is a great guy that is right here old school from brazil is right here in north carolina i never met him in, in person when i was in brazil for sure he was already here in the U.S. for very long. I meet up him here, very good guy, open heart, open mind, you know. And then uh, I think this is why I'm very connected with people that have an open heart and open mind. Right on, right on. Well, it's nice to hear some of the people that have impacted you. And, uh, and you've brought it full circle, obviously, in, in, in impacting students and, uh, and people every day. So uh, really appreciate your time and your insight and letting us get to know you better. Appreciate it. And obviously, if anybody's in the, the Wake Forest area, they should certainly come and check it out and, and get to know you. But uh, thank you for your time and the impact you're having on people in jiu-jitsu. And I wish you long, healthy, and happy life, sir. Um, I'm thrilled and happy to have you here in my match. You're, Marty, you are a other uh, aficionated by jiu-jitsu. You're passionate about jiu-jitsu. You love jiu-jitsu. You breathe jiu-jitsu. You know, just like uh, I do, you know, and uh, and this is the best thing. I hope that all the instructors in, in the world open their mind and understand that we have only one flag, and it is a jiu-jitsu flag, and yes. we have to love jiu-jitsu and share jiu-jitsu, no matter from 
what background you have, mm -hmm. but respect and love this sport that uh, we we live by. You know what I mean? We breathe and, and we enjoy so much. I'm very thankful to have you here, and uh, let's roll. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Really enjoyed that conversation with Professor Joel. What an interesting and awesome individual he is, for sure. Up next is the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. ever get through this life without heartache, without turmoil. We're all going to fail at something. Everyone's failed at something. Life is a trial. And trials are never supposed to be easy. Life is hard. It's hard handling the tragedies of life. When you're working on something and, and you put everything you have in it, and it doesn't work out, you lose your money and other people's money. It's hard. It is okay to be scared. It is okay to cry. But giving up should not be an option. And it doesn't matter how you get knocked down in life, because that's going to happen. All that matters is that you got to get up. Because when you fail, you get up, and then you fail, and then you get up, and that keeps you going. That's how humans are strong. Failure is an option, but giving up is not. Find a way. If you believe and you have faith, and you can get knocked down and get back up again, and you believe in perseverance as a great human quality, you find your way. You gotta have that resiliency over and over again. You gotta make a commitment to keep stepping up to the plate and swinging for the fences. Every day, whenever you do what you do, swing for the fences. Understanding when you swing for the fences, sometimes you'll miss. Did you know Hank Aaron had twice as many strikeouts as he had home runs? But he kept swinging for the fences. Most times he missed. But when he hit it, he knocked it out the park. When it's your shot to do what you do, keep swinging and keep striving. Change is going to happen in your life. Setbacks going to happen. But a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. The champions is not the potential. It's not the genetics. It's their perseverance to always show up, always willing to fail. Because in failure, that's part of success. Success is not a marathon of life and just ups. Success is formulated through failures, through facing your fears, through falling down and getting back up. That's what creates the champion. And that's going to do it for this edition of the show. As always, I thank you for listening. Hope you're enjoying the show. If you feel like you're benefiting from the show and want to show your support, you can support us on our Patreon page and a link in the show notes. Please like and follow us on social media and help us spread the word by reposting our posts and telling others about the show. You can leave comments on the website at www.racyjujitsurocks.com. You can also go to iTunes and leave comments as well as rate the show. And we would appreciate a five-star rating, which helps us with our standing in iTunes. You can also leave comments on our YouTube channel. If you have suggestions for the show, please don't hesitate to give those. We always like feedback and suggestions. Okay, that's going to do it. So until next time, this is Marty Josie, and I'll see you on the mat. <laughs>